Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. Uh, my topic today is part of our recovery series and um, the title is Nerve Flossing or Nerve Glides After Surgery. So let me back up just a minute and, and kind of give you a little primer on why this is important, why I think it's helpful, and why you should do it as part of your recovery. Regardless of what type of surgery, whether it's neck surgery or back surgery, um, typically we will give patients restrictions on what they can't do. And most people, their general sense is, I'm gonna do everything my doctor tells me, uh, and that's gonna make me better. The, the general sense usually is do nothing, and that's gonna be the best thing for me to recover. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that that's not my mantra, and that's not part of the recovery process. It's always an active recovery, a dynamic recovery, and, and I always want you doing just a little bit more each day. So, in your recovery process, it's important to keep the nerves in your spine, in your back, or your neck moving. Why is it important that they keep moving? Because now that we've operated on your spine, there's an inflammatory process and a healing process that occurs. We've invited all this inflammation into your spine and into, around your nerves. And what is definitely going to happen over the course of the next one to six weeks is there's gonna be some scarring that occurs. Now, scar tissue can uh, tether the nerve, meaning kind of glue it into a position where normally that nerve is able to slide and glide back and forth. So the idea of nerve flossing and nerve or nerve glides is to keep the nerves moving so that they don't get stuck or scar into one position. Why could it be bad if a nerve scars into one position? Well, that nerve wants to move and if you bend a certain way and that nerve is tethered, you might end up with some sort of kind of nerve strain syndrome that could be, um, be felt like a sciatic pain and it only happens when you bend or twist and that could be something that is almost impossible to fix down the road. So there is a vital period where these nerve glides or nerve flossing procedure um, of therapy needs to happen, and that is really starting within the first week to six weeks after surgery. So first week, just take it easy, stay mobile, don't really stress too much about this, but beginning at the end of the first week, you really need to advance into keeping the nerves moving. There's a couple ways that you can do this. I can show you a couple exercises Typically what I'll have my patients do, for example, after a low back surgery, have them lay down flat on the table, pull their knee up toward their chest, and then stretch their knee over to the contralateral side of their body. Just think about these nerves coming out of your spine. You want to, you want to put some tension on those nerves. If you think that uh, it's too much and it's hurting you, definitely don't do it. Uh, I don't want you bending over at the waist, that would be something that would put too much strain on the disc. So figuring out ways to stretch your extremities, move your arm or your leg wherever your surgery was, neck versus back, uh, is key. But we don't want you to do too much movement or to put too much strain on the spine so that we put a strain at the surgical site where a lot of other healing is occurring. The goal of the nerve glides or the nerve, nerve sliding, um, excuse me, nerve flossing or nerve glide procedures, which you can also get some uh, support from your physical therapist on, uh, is to keep the nerves mo moving during this initial healing phase so they don't scar into position.